We're standing here in this relatively open area of this really tall Rhizophora apiculata forest. And this area has occurred because one of the old trees has died. And to replace it are all of these young individuals. Right? So this is a part of the regeneration of the forest. And you can tell that these are young and rapidly growing because they've got these huge internodes. Right? So they're growing really, really fast in this higher light environment. The forest floor comparatively is dark. Well, we're here we're looking at the root system of uh, one of the trees. This is from the family Rhizophora, and this is Rhizophora stylosa. And you can see just how complicated the root system is and how much, how much resistance it offers to water flow. So this is one of the, um, the roots and also the burrows of the animals that live. So the crabs and the mud skippers and the lobsters, they all make this amazing amount of friction in this habitat. And that absolutely alters the hydrology or the way the water moves in and out of mangrove forests. And it leads to this phenomenon where there is really strong ebb flow. So that means when the water is coming out, it is gushing out. Uh, and that takes with it a whole load of material out into the nearshore coastal waters. We're standing here right in the middle of this really lovely Rhizophora apiculata forest. And what I like about this is the sort of monotonousness of the stems. There's so many stems and they're all about the same size, indicating that this forest actually probably grew up in one big recruitment event. It's about mm, 25 to 30 metres tall and you can see that the trees are all relatively well spaced and you feel like you're in a very quiet and uh, exotic uh, forest. So what you can see here is that there's a whole lot of leaf litter, so litter that leaves that have fallen from the canopy and flowers and propagules and sticks all sitting here on the boardwalk. But if you take a little look down onto the mud, you can see that, that while there are leaves that are there, they're in no way the same density as they are on the boardwalk. And that's because the crabs are burying them. So they're being moved out by the tide, but in addition to that, the crabs are shredding them and taking them below ground. Well, here we are in this big uh, Rhizophora apiculata forest, and I'm standing on one of the kind of average sized trees for this area. And you can see if you look out at this forest, how attractive these forests are for their timber products. And in fact, in many parts of the world, these sorts of forests have been removed for timber. And in some countries, there's actually a sustainable forestry built around this particular kind of forest. So we've come here to the mangroves in North Queensland to have a look at the biology of some of the plants and animals. And what I've got for you here in my hands are some of the propagules. Now these are not, so, well some of them are seeds, but some of them are actually living seedlings. So in the mangroves, a lot of the trees have, uh, give birth to live young, which is a process called vivapory. And you can see that they're all ready to go. They're green, they have roots on this side, on this end, and their leaf initials, and they float off down the river. You can see here that we've got quite a lot of variation in form. So we go from these very small Cereops tagal and Cereops australis, to Brugueras, to the Rhizophoras. And these are all from the family Rhizophoraceae. They uh, have a similar plan. They've got leaf initials ready to go, and on their bases, they have root initials that are also ready to go. So these were shed from the mother plant and then they either lodge in the mud and start to grow or they're dispersed in the water. These other two, this is also a viviparous propagule from Avicennia marina. It's got, a, it's got a coat on it though. And then this funny sort of angular seed is from the, the genus Xylocarpus. And these uh, are form big cannonball-like uh, fruits that then break into pieces and these float off and you can find them on the beaches in North Queensland. 
So we've just, I've just gotten down off the boardwalk to pick up some mud whelks. This is one of the species of mud whelks. And these are just great big snails that are cruising along the surface of the sediment. And what they're eating is the, the detrital particles. So these are the dead organic matter from the leaves and from the insect frass and uh, from the, um, from the de decomposing uh, material. And also the teeny tiny plants that are the, the algae that are living on the surface of the mud. This is another very common uh, species of mud whelk that's on the surface of the mangrove sediments in North Queensland. And we're watching here the fiddler crabs emerging from their burrows. The tides receded, so the sediment now is open to the light. And these guys with their big waving claw that they use to attract mates and males use to, uh, to fight each other. But you can see he's picking up, or she is picking up sediment uh, with one claw and shoveling it into the mouth. And they're grazing on the very small plants and detritus that are present on the sediment surface.